chances are high that the seller of this land is either a driver or can drive. So if he's a driver, has a car, or can drive, he will have a driver's license. The driver's license will have his first and last name. To get the driver's license, they need a national ID number, a national ID, and other uh, documentation or verification uh, items that the driver's license office requires. So to the extent that you're able to get the, the seller's driver's license, you will add that onto your list of verification items. Now you know you have the person well searched in land, they have a national ID, which you verified it's okay, the transfer form on which this uh, title came into their names is valid within land, uh, the physical title check is exactly what you expected to see, is in a new development, the title is new, it has the serial numbers ABC, uh, your brought the surveyors, they have done everything well, the, the land is exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, bank transfer, the bank account is in the seller's names, that is excellent. If there was a mortgage, it was released well, you have the original mortgage release letter from the bank. And then uh, you have a copy of the Ndagano, Jebagulirako. You have verified their tax identification number, it is in their names, John Mukisa, and also uh, you have now checked their driver's license and it's okay. You're getting close to being able to pay, but you still have two more steps. These two steps can also cause you a problem if you don't take them. Much as the 11 steps look good, the two remaining ones are necessary. Step number 12, you need to use a lawyer you need to engage the services of a lawyer. Lawyers are necessary. It is not an... Some people, some sellers will try and discourage you. They tell you, Nay, lawyer, why? why? You're spending more money. What's a lawyer? lawyer. I told lawyer. I told you, 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 I You're just wasting time. No, this is pressure tactics. No, it's... Ignore it. You need the lawyer to draft the endagano for you. If you are the buyer of the plot of the land, if you want to buy the land, your lawyer has to draft the letter covering you, the agreement covering you, and then share it with the seller. Sellers will usually agree because all they have is a piece of land which is physically present, so they will mostly agree to all uh, conditions that you might put or clauses, right? cover yourself. The lawyer has to put it in legalese, legal terms for you so that it can cover you, it can cover your investment in case of anything. This is necessary. Some sellers will tell you, but lawyer, tatuvei, taaga, as long as we agree, both you and I, that's all that matters. Don't waste your money. Please do not listen to this. It is a ploy to get you feeling comfortable, to make you avoid doing your due diligence and in the end get you to lose your money and you will never see this seller again. Some sellers will play on your uh, emotions. They will play on, uh, they will guilt trip you. They will say, but me, I'm an old man. I'm an old woman. Do you think I'm going to cheat? Cutting hands and kubekochi. Nakola da. Really? But you're selling. Right? A person who is selling their piece of land or property has no leverage on you at all. It is you with the buyer who has the leverage. There, like I told you, hundreds of plots available. Get the lawyer to draft for you the document, the agreement of sale, review it, share a copy with, of that to the uh, seller, let the seller review it, amend, adjust any clauses that they want, bring it back to you, review it, make sure it is okay. Once this is done, Give a copy of the agreement to the seller and tell them on such and such a day, this is the document that we are going to sign on that day. Why? Because you're trying to, to reduce the barrier to the signature, the barrier to the sale. So tell him, bring that document with you on the day of. And I will also bring mine on the day of. The original document. 
he's not going to type it and he's not going to um, change it. He could attempt to, but you being the smart person that you are, you will ensure that your document has specific features in it to guard against fraud. We can discuss this when you call us and we tell you what to do or how to write this document so that it will not be faked or retyped by someone else. You can choose to keep both agreements with you. You'll come with two copies because you know that they are okay and they are the same. When you get to the bank or to the location of the transaction that morning, you can give them the document and they read it first again to ensure it covers everything well. Please review the agreement that we're going to sign. Review it. And let them review it. Use the lawyer. Lawyer will ensure that all these things that we're talking about are falling in place well. Lawyer will capture them all in the agreement. They will write everything well for you. And you will be covered. The lawyer is a necessary expense. A necessary expense. Also, the lawyer, by the way, make sure you go, Uganda Law Commission has a list of all lawyers. Don't listen to people telling you, oh, I'm a lawyer, I'm a lawyer, it is a no. Verify the lawyer. Check what you expect. Inspect what you expect and verify that this lawyer is registered with the Uganda Law Council. They have a register of good performing lawyers, bad performing lawyers, lawyers who are under disciplinary, uh, disciplinary uh, hearings, pending disciplinary committee hearings, etc. They have this. So you go to Uganda Law Commission, you tell them, hey, I would like to engage this lawyer. Can you please verify that this lawyer is in good standing with the law council? And they will tell you because it is in their best interest to show that the law industry is working well, it is regulated, it is, so they will write to you and tell you, yes, this lawyer is good. Now, in case this is a new lawyer, this is a small caveat, in case this is a new lawyer that you're using, go to the Uganda Law Commission, Law Council, and verify that the lawyer is registered, the lawyer is in good standing. This is imperative. So, what a lawyer and a mufiri. You will see if your lawyer is a mufere or has been involved in fraudulent activities, they will tell you. He's in good standing or is he not? If he's not in good standing, don't bother. They might not even tell you the reason why he's not in good standing. But he is or he is not. That's it. And then you know you see Jamuko Savon on Jamuko. If you come to Lansen Homes Limited, tell us, hey, this is the transaction I need to do. This is uh, you know, location, it is these are the searches we have done, it is I'm at the level of the lawyer. Can you assist? I say, of course we can assist. We have lawyers trustworthy in perfect standing with the law council. They deal in land transactions all the time. They have templates. You just plug in your detail, pop, 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 pop. everything looks good. Yes, of course. Okay. The last mistake. The last mistake is not contacting Lands and Homes Limited. If you transact without contacting us, that's a mistake. You don't have to, but it is in your best interest to contact us. We have done hundreds of these transactions. We have helped multiple number of people. We have experienced these steps I know at the back of my mind. Once I enter a situation, land transaction, property transaction situation, I know inherently. I see A, B, C, I know this will not work, this will not work, we move. That's why I told you I was able to go to over 400 plots, 400 land locations. And in fact, out of those 400, we did not even choose one. For some reason, they did not work. We did not until we saw one that we revisited over a period of months, checked it, counter-checked it, liked it. A few of these steps were pending. They were taking time. So we checked it, checked it, checked it, until we got everything correctly. Clients are happy. They are very comfortable. They paid in time. Everything worked out well. 
things are transferred in their names, everyone is happy. In fact, some of the sellers pray for us and our clients that we may prosper on these pieces of land that we're buying. Mwana wange kangu sabire mikisa okoze bulunja ate bintu engeri jo bitebedde nange binzizi za mwana wange kangu sabire mwana wange of course we're going to need and pray for blessings there is a way that when you do something professionally no mundu wabanga yasoma obate yasoma can recognize quality class and professionalism this is easy to recognize whether you're educated or not. Professionalism will be professionalism. And when someone recognizes his professionalism, they have no choice but to be moved positively in support of you. But they are bringing their employment ID. Of course, they are bringing something else. Of course, I add on my file for verification. I give the client, the client is overwhelmed with gratitude. So, once you have done all these checks and you have contacted Lansing Homes to assist you with this, which is not a requirement, but recommended, then we will give you the guiding steps on how to actually transact on that day. You have to ensure that you have shared the agreement with the seller. You have to write the list, you have a table of the list of things that you require from the seller on that day. Tell them, I need you to come with the original national ID, your copy. I need you to come with two passport size pictures. I need you to come with your original mortgage release letter. I need you to come with your original physical title. I need you to come with uh, a pen that is working. <laughs> I need you to come with Endagano Jawagulirako. I need you to come with your original driver's license. Come with a TIN number Momotwe Ngojimanye. Come with, you see? You write this list and send it to the seller. We are going to meet on Wednesday. Uh, today is maybe Monday. You say we are going to meet on Wednesday at such and such a time or at such and such a bank. Come with the following things. I will come with the following. The agreements. Uh, I will come with whatever documents you're going to come from our list. Okay? Your own ID. Your own pictures. If she needs them. Whatever. You're going to come with this. You write your list of what you're going to do and what the client is supposed to do and bring. We will agree. We will meet at this time. Tell them the process. People have trust issues in Uganda. They don't trust and they are not trustworthy. But you have to go in with an open spirit. This is why the process I'm telling you describes showing your hand. Openly. I'm going to come with this, you come with this. You have a copy of Reddit, you will read it. So then you say, when we arrive on that day, this is the procedure. When we arrive, I'll give you the agreement. You read it afresh. Make sure it's okay. Make sure you're with your witness. Make sure you're with your lawyer or your seller. Now we are good. Make sure you're with your witness. Make sure you're with your lawyer. We are with your lawyer. Then you tell the seller, uh, once we reach, I want you to start signing the endagano on your side. You sign on your side. You start. Right? Whereas me, I'm talking to the bank and telling the bank, give me the transfer form. You're signing. I'm getting the transfer form. This has to be clearly discussed with the seller so that when you reach there, because of trust issues, if there is a lot of distrust and there is a lot of money involved, there is a huge barrier to progress. You don't want to release your money 
and they don't want to release their title, and yet you have come to do a transaction. Why? Because you did not discuss this in advance. So you tell them, once we arrive, you will read the agreement again. Once you've read and you're okay with it, start signing. Once you start signing, I will also start the transfer process. So where the money is coming from, I write, I write, I write, I write. Then you, I'll give you, I'll give you the, actually, no, you skipped a step. The first step is we go in, I get the transfer form. When you get the transfer form, give it to the seller to put in their name, account number, etc., where the money is going. That is your show of good faith to the seller to start with. Write where your money is going. If you make a mistake, it's up to you. And make sure you tell them, if you make a mistake, it's up to you. Once they have filled that part, they give you the transfer form. Now the seller starts signing the agreement. Each page they have to sign from beginning to end, each page, and their witness and their lawyer has to do the same. Uh, you, and also the receipt, you know, you print out a receipt, money, acknowledgement. That one, they don't sign yet, okay? You fill out here where the money is coming from and you hand over to the bank so the bank can start processing. While they are processing that one, you now start signing the copy of the agreement that the seller has already finished signing. You sign this is in a case where you're not trusting each other. Usually by the time you're doing these 13 steps, you've built a relationship with the seller. And if everything has been checking off, your level of trust has been raising and you may not want to go through all this detail. But in case you have come and it was pulling teeth at each level, you might want to use this method. The process that we're describing now, you have to discuss before you go to the bank so that when you get to the bank, the friction, the hesitation is leveled. You sign the form, the seller signs the form, the bank is processing the transfer now, right? Then the bank will give you the paper, they'll say, yes, we have already processed. And now you've signed everything. The transfer form that the bank gives you, the original transfer form, is the receipt that you give to the seller. The seller now signs the acknowledgement that they have received the money because they have this form. This is the bank's guarantee that the money has moved from your account to the other one. At which point you're receiving a text message on your phone from your bank that the money has gone. You have shown it to the seller. The seller has taken a picture of it. Do you see how the transaction is moving? You get your copy of the agreement. The seller keeps the copy. You get your acknowledgement. Uh, the seller now brought two photocopies of their national ID with the passport photo. They signed those ones. You get those ones. They brought their national ID, the driver's license. You sign that one. You take that one. All these documents you get from them the uh, you get from them the uh, the physical title. You get the physical title. This is very important. You get the physical title. Uh, you give them the bank uh, paper. You get from them the mortgage release letter. Endagonia Gudirako. You get their TIN number, they have to sign on the TIN number, you get that one, and uh, you get all these documents. The ownership is transferring. Now, once the bank has sent you the text message, it shows that your money has gone off your account. Depending on the bank where you did this transaction, depending on whether you did the RTGS or EFT or whatever you did, it can take anywhere from instantaneous, if it is instant bank, you know, within the bank, two hours or next day. Okay, so you can ask the bank prior, which is the fastest method. The bank will tell you. If it is a two hour transaction that you're looking at, then you can sit at a cafe, wait for these two hours. If you trust the person and they have already seen the money has gone, they can wait with their bank, they can start waiting. But really at this point, it's just a waiting game. You have your copy of all original documents, including the title. And at this point, once the seller, right, once the seller sees the notification that they have received the money, they can sign your transfer form. And that's it. Right? This is it. If you feel that it is overkill to go through these steps, 
as you spend more and more on a property purchase, the level of due diligence rises as well. The level of risk and tolerance of risk changes and the level of loss also increases. So it is imperative that you go through all these 13 steps, verify them all, ensure you have followed them well, you can write them on the table. If you need guidance, please contact Lands and Homes Limited. We will assist you in this process. Again, our WhatsApp number for diaspora clients is plus one four six nine two seven eight one one three eight. You can call or WhatsApp on this number anytime, twenty four seven. Local number is zero seven eight two six six four four three zero. You can also call or WhatsApp as well. Okay. Till the next one. Have a happy time searching for your land. Don't be scared of looking at 20, 30, 50 plots. Do not. We can see up to more than 400 plots before you get the plot that you're looking for. If you have any question, contact us and we'll be able to assist you. Till the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.